Hi, I'm Mick from MDC. Now this is an introduction on the Forbes 13 Plus, showing the features of this particular van. To start our journey, we're gonna talk about things that you do before you come and turn up to us to pick up your van. One is make sure that you got a brake controller in your car. The brake controller will assist you in a, uh, your brakes on your van. Okay, with that, you need a 12 pin plug, which has got the bottom seven is exactly the same as a normal flat seven, all right? But we have another wire going to the number 12 pin, which gives you power for your um, breakaway system. The other thing is your 50 amp Anderson plug, so that's five zero Anderson plug. So that's gonna help you with your charging of your batteries. So you've got a full battery system when you get to where you're going. Also guys, you need to remove the tow ball off your car. Now, saying that, your tongue needs to look like this when you turn up. Okay, so ball off. Okay, so we can attach our receiver that goes on the DO35 or Polyblock, whichever, so therefore we can get you on the road. On hooking up from your, your van to your car, guys, we have a DO35 hitch. So basically, it's just the pin that goes underneath it. Basically, once you're over the top, with the jockey wheel, you wind down as far as it goes, as in like, once the jockey wheel becomes loose, all ball weight is here, push the red button. That means it's locked on. Okay, so once this button is pushed and this little arc comes forward, that means it's locked on. To get it off, push the button down, push that back, release the button, and you open up the throat, and then you wind the jockey wheel off. But we're, we're hooking up at the moment, so button down, and then 12 pin plug, Plug that in just there, secure it. Your Anderson plug, 50 amp, charging of the batteries. Plug that in, and then chain. By law, you have to cross the chains, okay? So it's a, it does a support role for anything should happen. Okay, once you cross your chains, what it does, it acts as a cradle. So if anything should fail here, it falls into a cradle, so it supports the towing of the van. Obviously, you'll know it's coming off, Instead of, if the chains were um, straight up and down to there, what it could happen is it could dig in, essentially flip on the car, and that's what we don't want. All right, so hence why you've got to cross your chains. Also, breakaway unit. Now this must be attached to your chassis, not to your chains, all right? Has to be to the chassis of your car. So, easiest part on this car is around this bar that's here. If your van comes detached from the car, this, your breakaway unit, on this wire, it pulls out, okay? And then it activates the electric brakes that are in there. So the brake comes on so it doesn't career around the road or anything. Comes on until you can push that back in, resets everything. And then jockey wheel up. So pull the pin, swing it up. Make sure those pins go back in through here. Handle up, handbrake off. You're done, you're ready to go. On your jockey wheel here, guys, every time you're taking it off from the car, be it camping, at home, whatever, what I would suggest is have the wheel running crossways across your van. Not vertical with the van, but crossways with your van. It seems to support your A-frame a lot better. But also, when you're reversing on, if you miss it a little bit, you're able to move on the wheel itself, not move the whole jockey wheel. So you're moving on the wheel first. So for safety reasons and so forth, and that, make sure you're, you're having your jockey wheel run across your van. Stabilizers. Just take the pressure off there, pull the handle, let it drop down into position. You grab your wind down bar, which is this, a 19 mil socket on the end of it, put it inside, and you wind it out. So when you wind it out, you bring up the fan a little bit. This is not a jack, this is a stabilizing leg. Checking your gas for all your appliances. Check your O-ring. It's all good, reattach. All right, don't turn the gas on just yet. Get your appliances ready and then come back and turn your gas on. So then it pressurizes the system. On your Forbes 13 rear driver's side, you have filling points for your water. On the left-hand side, 
you do have your filling point for your water tank. On the right hand side, you have mains water pressure. Okay, just below that, you have a breather. When you're filling up your tanks, so make sure you buy food grade hose, all right? So therefore you don't have that tinge in it. Now, if you're gonna to go to mains water pressure, it's in a three quarter inch BSP. Nylax and another company, NETA, make that product. It's what will fit on here and work well. It's up to you which ones you grab yourself. You have external shower. Pop that in there, open her up. You got two nozzles in there, hot and cold, and obviously the hot will come on where if you're using your hot water. And this is your little valve, basically for flow of water. Okay. When you're not in use, just hang that up there. And you have flushing point for your grey water tank. Every now and then you will want to flush your tank. Now just stick your finger in there to get the right size hose that you're going to flush your grey water tank. And when you are flushing your tank, it comes down out of here just in front of the wheel. So you turn that knob, opens up the valve, it releases all the grey water. Just on the Forbes range, another little feature is a tap on the front end. You know, if you need to wash your hands, the little ones that have got dirty fingers or whatever want to wash their hands, once you've got your water pump on or plugged into mains water, right, this becomes activated. All right, so as simple as just turn and tap. This is your Thetford key to your toilet, okay? So unlock, push the button, opens her up. To fill this, you just slightly pull that down and that swings out, all right? Undo the top. This is where you fill from. So when you fill, this is your water level here. So you watch the water level come up. Once it's near the top, you know it's full. You put the cap back on, slightly just down so it fits underneath there, and then you've got the waters full. To take it out of the van, there's a little lever at the bottom just locks it in place. Press that up, take that out. When this is full, you hit that button at the back, release the pressure, and then basically, it's got wheels on it. You can take your little friend for a walk to the right dump spot. Now this is black water, consider a black wastage water, so you have to dump it in the appropriate places, okay? When you do go for a walk, handle down, extends, and then we go for a little walk. When you get to your dump station, nozzle forward, undo, and actually tipping it out. Okay, so that's the only way this is gonna happen where you have to manually do it. Also guys, this doubles as a little measuring cup for your chemicals when you put your chemicals back in and so forth to break down all your little nasty habits. And then she goes back away. Your power source on the outside of your van is 15 amp. You get a 15 amp lead, plug it in, and you plug it into your power outside of the caravan park. Now, whilst at home, if you haven't got a 15 amp at home and you need to charge it, go to Bunnings and buy yourself an adapter. It's called an amphibian adapter from 10 to 15 because you must maintain your batteries in your van. Only other thing that I will tell you, please do not file down this earth, this bigger earth down here to a 10 amp. Very dangerous and illegal. So please don't do that. Go and buy that adapter box. When you're plugged into 240, you must not have it coiled up like this. So what you've got to do, you've got to make sure she's a big loop. All right, so with the RCDs and that keep tripping out, it's probably because of this, because it overheats. All right, so basically you just got to make sure that it's in big loops, not a small tight loop. So when you want to lock this door, you put the key in, you push the handle to the rear, you turn the key to the rear. Half turn back, door's locked, okay? When you wanna unlock, key back in, turn it to the front, it unlocks, turn it half back, key, door handle to the front, opens up, not a problem, all right? To separate the door, it's not the door handle, it's the, the little black lever. Push up ever so slightly, it separates the door. So at night time, when you wanna have breeze in as well, if you go open all the windows, basically you can have that open, let breeze through. When you want to reattach the door, bring it together and clip both ends, top and bottom, together. Make sure it all goes together well. 
to latch it open, this little bar here comes out. You've got a little latch on the body, attaches to the body, all done. Also, when you want to lock the door from the inside, guys, basically handle that way and close the door up. But when you want to get out, it can only get out with the handle coming up. Don't try and push it down because it will not open. The handle has to come up so you can unlock it from internal. And this is how you bring your step in and out. Lock it in place, slowly pick it back up and just push it underneath the van. Simple. This silver key, all right, will open a few of the little barbecue bench outside. So open it up, place it down. Only put on here 10 to 15 kilos, no more than that, okay? So a couple of plates, some saucers or whatever, maybe a TV, whatever, but don't exceed the 15 kilos, all right? It's not for children to be sitting on, all right? It's only a little bench. On the Forbes 13 Plus, you have two storage drawers on the driver's side of the van. This big black key is to unlock all of these locks. Turn them open. With these drawers, you push down on the handle. Once you move it just past the frame of the caravan, let it go. Please do not have this handle held down because what it will do sometimes, it will release the brake and the whole drawer will fall out onto your feet. When you want it to go back in, push it back down, push it back away and let it go and it locks back into place. Okay, just at the rear of your van guys, there are recovery points. That are these ones down here. Now they are rated three and three quarter ton. You have to be unhooked from your car all right, you cannot pull both units out because that's rated over to five ton. All right, so these are rated to three and three quarter. So all your vans, no problems whatsoever, but you've got to be unhooked from your car if you're going to use recovery points. In your Forbes range, you always find your control panel in one of the cabinets. At the top there, there's your main switch, your kill switch, you'll turn that on to make sure everything comes on. You also got to turn individual bits and pieces on to make them work, okay? I'm gonna turn them off at the moment. Basically, if you want the water pump on, you have to turn your water pump on, all right? And that little red light will light up and tell you that it is on. If it's not working, there's a little fuse above it, all right? Little circuit breaker fuse, so push that once or twice just to reset, all right? If there's any problems with that, in behind there is that little fuse. You can take that off, take that out, check the fuse, replace it if you need to. So there's little maintenance things that you've got to do and can do on your own, all right? So if something's not working, just check things out. With your electrical panel, guys, this is how many uh, volts you have in your battery system. Over here, you have a key, all right? 13 volts is full, your full battery power. So basically with an AGM battery, you've got to keep them topped up all the time. So therefore you need to, you gotta plug it into 240 to get that back up to 13. Never let it get down below 12.2. You don't wanna um, maybe um, drop a cell in your battery and then it's no good for you, okay? So basically, you've gotta keep it topped up all the time. You maintain your van. If you need to get into your batteries or your ba some of your battery systems or the electrical, it's under your mattress. So if you pop this latch open, you got these three batteries in here. So you got these 300 amp hours. This is your modified inverter. So it's a thousand watt modified. You got your 240 charger here and you've got your DC to DC charger here. All right. Your 240 charger must be plugged in and turned on. So it obviously it can take current. Um, also in this little box here, you've got fuses that are down here. One for your radio, one for your gas alarm, and one for your breakaway unit. You just gotta check all your manuals and so forth that you get, the wiring diagrams, and it'll state which one goes to where. All right, you also got mega fuse in here, guys. This is the mega switch, all right? If anything trips out, this button is activated, and see that little lever? It comes down. So to reset, you've gotta push that back up. It just resets the whole lot. Now this one here is one of your little breakers. Down here you've got little red panels and so forth. It just doesn't have the red cover on it. All right, if any one of these gets uh, tripped, 
there's a little button at this end. If it's tripped, the little button comes out. You just gotta push it back in and reset it. Okay guys, this is your RCD, this is your 240 in. For some reason, if it's switched out, that means there's a little fault problem. If it's down like this, that means it's tripped out. So just push it back up. That could be one of the major causes of not having power to your van. This is your 240, 35 amp, seven stage charger. What you're gonna do, you're gonna have to make sure that it's turned on. You'll hear that beep, but you know that 240 is coming in from the 15 amp plug outside. The battery system is set up for our AGM batteries. But then again, for some reason, if you want to change the batteries out, you have to go through here and go through all the uh, selections again. So therefore, you, if you want a calcium battery or you want a gel battery you want to put in here because you're more comfortable with them, by all means, you can do so, but you've got to go through the battery um, selection process. If you run your batteries down, there's a reconditioning mode in here. So therefore, you can hit that button and it's going to tell you about full re reconditioning. So therefore, it's going to run 24 hours it's got to get a slow charge in there and bring them back up. On the far one, this end is your voltmeter is what's coming in. That's your digital display there. That's what's charging through your system. In this box of electrics as well, guys, just to the right of your um, 240 charger is your DC to DC charger. It'll have flashing on there. If it's on solo, flashing that it's charging, it's saying that it's working. If it goes to red, that means it's not working. So then you go through your system and see what is it fail. All right, so just have a check on everything that's in this box. When you want to plug in electric jugs and so forth, um, sometimes they will not run off the inverter. Okay, so you've got to check the power source from your jug, toaster, whichever. If it exceeds a thousand watts, well then it will trip out and won't work. But if you've got things like CPAP machines and little devices like that, that you know that draw less than a thousand watts, they are A-OK -okay to use. Now also, when you're plugged into 240, your 10 amp, plugs on the inside of your vans, right, only come alive when they're plugged in, all right? They do not come alive of your battery system. So once you're plugged in at a caravan park or plugged into Jenny through your mains, that's the only time that they come alive. All right, so you've got 12 volt sockets around here as well, as, as in uh, USBs, all right? So you can plug your phones, your um, computers in, such like that, okay? So you can use those, they can run off your battery system. So they are a-okay to use. Okay guys, if you want to use your inverter internally, don't forget it's only a 10 amp. What you do, you go down with the little finger hatch, you pop it through, you plug it into the inverter. Please do not open the hatch and go over the top. That's what the little finger hatch is for. So it pops through, so you're not sitting on any cords. Your electric awning outside is hooked up to your main battery. And this is your main battery switch so you turn that on you don't need to turn on any of these switches because it's already hooked up to your battery system now we're just going to hit this button here and she starts coming out just on windy days um, if the wind's hitting you straight in the face just put three fingers or two fingers on here just in case you hit get hit by gusts of wind so you don't want this thrown over the top and breaking your awning so just have three place three fingers on here just to hold it down on its way out on the way out guys, it will go into a certain distance and it will stop automatically, okay? So you don't need to hold the finger on the button or anything, it will stop. Okay guys, the legs are in the awning face here, so just pop off one end, pop off the other, all right? Swing it directly down. As you're swinging it down, swap over hands, so you're always on the inside of it. Undo it and then slide it along. All right, so when you get the right distance, it's just push up the top cap there, put down the bottom, put that in, and then it's locked into place. Okay, have this free, so this can move, so you can move it up. But once you get it to a point, this is when you'll lock it into place. Okay guys, so on this, you have two options. You can have it back like that at 45 degrees back to the van, or you can pop it straight down to the ground, and with these little bad boys, you can peg it into the ground. Okay, obviously guys, you've got to unpeg. You loosen off here, that slides back up. All right, have your right hand up here as you're pushing that in as you swing it up. So it slips in there. Make sure that this is square here, so it folds in nice and flush. 
And if it's at coming back to the van, all you gotta do is pop that lid, take the pressure off here. All right, it comes out, you slide that up, you lock it off, swing it straight down. Again, put the thumb on there, swing that up. Make sure that that's flat at that end, clips in. And then you come over here, you got open and closed, so therefore you just push the button close and it comes in. Again, holding here, just in case those gust of winds come up and you're prepared so it doesn't get flipped over the van. This is your manual override guys, so if something happens and you lose power to your electric awning, this is your manual override, so you're always going to get it out. It just goes up here, fits in a little thing there and you wind it out. Also on your electric awning guys, this is your adjusting tool. But it also goes up beside your manual override and this is for adjustment purposes only. As you open it up, you've got a secondary locking pin. You pull it up, turn it on the side, make sure it locks back into place. Blue tab down, handle above. Do not grab the below handle because you'll break this little mechanism here and it's for your little extra draw. So as you're pulling out, let the blue handle go. Pull it out. Once you're out, just make sure that it has locked into place. You grab your leg, it goes just in here to support leg. Basically, put it in there, lift it up ever so slightly so it takes pressure and do it up. So therefore, it can stand on its own just like that. You'll come around the front, your bungee cords to hold everything in place. Your release bungee cord, you open it up. You've got wind brakes. Just slide them up, swing them out. This little partition goes here, goes back down and slides in and holds onto itself. So the other one slides up, swing it out, slide down, and that holds it in place. Okay? Then you come to the second one, bungee cord off. Up, open, your drainer, spice rack, whatever you want, tap up. Now that we have this open, we're ready to hook up the gas. So once you get around here, the gas lob you've got to take off, so push it in slightly, turn it one way, alright, gas line is underneath here. Find the end of it, pull it out with your gas fitting, which is that there. You place in, it can only turn one way. Push it in and turn to the right. You're hooked up for your gas. Now you have to go to the bottle at the front and actually turn the gas on. Now we've got to come to my burner. You have to take all these polystyrene locks off because they're for protection, all right? But you have to take them off before you light your stove. So you do that, all right? Push down, hold it for five seconds, then your burner's on. Wait for at least half an hour before you put these back in its place if you're gonna be going traveling, because obviously the cast iron plates will melt these. Your electric start here is battery operated, so it's 12 volt start, okay? If you get to a point where you've used it, been around for a year, your battery fails. It's just a simple process. Basically take out the drawer. There's little black latches on the side, all right? This side goes down. This side goes up, your drawer will pop out, okay? Just under here, there's a little black box. There's a little latch at the front of it. You pull that down and you can see the battery inside. You just change it. It's a D-sized battery, I think it is, just in there. In this second drawer, you have a black hose, which is your wastage hose from your sink. It's just protruding out of the bottom. What you've got to do is pull it out and put that into a bucket, okay? Dispose of it properly. Please don't just throw it around willy-nilly, but dispose of it properly. If you've got a place to put it in, do so. When you want to put it away, hose back up to almost into the drawer, not quite, and then latch it back up, thumb on there, so it holds that into place. Also guys, remember, do not throw these away, because these are the protection for your elements, and also protection with your cast iron plates. So just go back over the top. You need protection on here because if not, they will rattle around and they will break. Okay guys, so when you're closing your kitchen up, all right, it's the same thing in reverse. One, you've, we've already spoken about the styrene box for protection. 
all right, through here. You've got to make sure you put the little latch on there to make sure that drawer stays closed. With the sink here, the tap's got to go down, all right? Anything that you put in there, you can put in your sink. Put a towel around it so it doesn't rattle around, all right? Place that down over like that. Also, bungee cord over, all right? And what I've done is I've waited for more than half an hour, so then I can close my kitchen. And what it is, basically, off the clip there, slide her up, swing her away, behind the little shelf there, swing it up, swing it away, come behind the little partition there so it holds it in place, okay? Swing this back over the top, down, bungee cord. Basically, once you pack that all away, it's all secured, okay? Then you come round to the front, you take your kitchen leg off, all right? Put it in the appropriate place, tab down, push away, let the tab go, pushing it in, pushing it in, pushing it in, all right? Once you've got it in there, just make sure that that locking mechanism has to take place, all right? And then put the secondary lock and then shake it again, all right? Up lock it away, then it's all secured. This big black key is the one to unlock these locks. Turn the latches, drop it down. So you got a secondary safety. You take that one off, blue tab down, pull it out, let it go. Slide it all the way out so the lock's in the place. Okay, you're securing your fridge, guys. See so there's a little slits down here. This is where you tie it through and tie it to the handle. All right, you make it as secure as possible. All right, so your fridge is nice and secured. If you want, you can use one strap at the back, but you can use two at the front if you like, because you've got three or four in the box that you get. So if you want, you can use two straps at the front. It just secures it that little bit better as well. With the light switch inside, just turn that on. And just in there, there's a 12 volt socket and an Anderson plug. Okay, the Anderson plug's there just in case you're going extreme off-road, all right, then you can use the Anderson plug instead of a 12 volt socket. Also, as well, guys, if you want to keep your fridge activated, you've got to go and turn on the mains power switch. Then it comes live with your Anderson plug or your 12 volt. I don't like hot beer, so make sure you turn your kill switch isolator on. Popping open the back, so you've got to drop down the wheels first of that. You've got over center catches, two at the top and one pin at the bottom. So basically, you've got to take your gold clip out, over center catch, off there, do the other one, and then take your pin out and leave it on the bar and drop it down. Simple as that. Two gas struts. Now, these are 55 kilo wheel and tire. All right, two gas struts equates to about 18 kilos, so very light. Wherever you get your pins or your clips from, put them back where you got them from, so therefore you will not lose them. If you're small in stature and you can't quite reach the over center catches on the roof, don't be afraid to stand on here. Pop that open. Again, put that back once where it came from. You can step across and do exactly the same thing here. When you're opening up the bed area, this little key here, the black one there, is the one that you use. So you unlock, press the button, it unlocks. Okay, on the center catch out here, pop that, turn it, and it just folds out. Pop that, turn it, comes out, just sits there. Again, guys, if you are only short in stature, you can stand on the tire, pop that lock, step across, pop the lock again, put it down, and it's not very heavy at all. Pop the handle up, just give it a little, little light pull. It's got a little gas struts in there as well. All right, over center catch. Just give it a little pull. Come over this side, over center catch, down. Just give it a little pull. And also just tap the corner, just make sure the corners are in place. So for a little bit more added security, just grab yourself a couple of little padlocks and just put them through there, just so therefore no one can open this when you're not around. Okay guys, now I've done the over catches at the front, and now we're ready to pop the roof. So we just go inside, 
Okay, so when you come in guys, left hand on there, one on the roof, and push up. As you're coming through the door, always do the front first, and you'll come back and do the back one. Just come to the front guys, and basically just lock off the handle. So when you come in, you've set up the back, you've pushed the roof up, and this is when you're gonna fold out your mattress guys. So you just push it away, step up, grab it, keep pushing it away with your leg, push it out, then unfold it. Just internal guys, you notice that the water gauge is on the wall just inside the door to the right of when you walk in the in your van. So basically you can check your grey water tank and your water and your fresh water levels at all times. Just on your Forbes 13 Plus guys, it's just a little bit different setup in your bathroom. Alright, so between the 12, the 13, the 15, it's just everything is ever so slightly different. With the internal windows guys, it's got little grey buttons there. You must push that button in and move the handle. Push the button in and move the handle. Please don't just yank on it because you'll break the internal lock. All right. The window itself goes out to three positions. All right. Once you hear the click, stop. You go too far, you release it, it'll come back in. All right. So therefore we go out to, see that? I released it. Once you feel a click, stop. I want to release it, bring it back in, all right? You'll hear that click. Well, you know it's locked back into place. Also, when you close and guys, there is two little latches in here where you can go into the center or go completely on the inside of it. All right, if you go into the center, it leaves a little gap for ventilation, all right? So at night time, if you want a little bit of air, fine. But when you're traveling, it's got to be on the inside one, the internal one, or else you're just going to fill up with dust. Also, with your window, you have a fly screen that comes down, and you have a privacy screen that comes up, which you can go half and half if you wish. Just clip them together as such. All right, separate. Just go slowly. Don't be in a rush. You're on holidays, you don't need to be in a rush. Just push them away slowly, that's all you need to do. With your shower hatch, guys, what it is, you got a little button on here, turns the light on, you got a little swivel. So just turning off that, opens up the hatch. You got a neutral switch in there, you've got an external fan that takes that out, or you got a one that blows in, all right? So you can just have it any way you want. Now, onto your diesel heater. First and foremost, guys, basically, again, you've got to open your cabinet up and actually turn it on so it's got ignition, all right? Secondary, obviously make sure that you've got diesel in your tank, obviously, all right? And then come in here. Now, what you want to do is basically turn the volume right up to this highest point and then hit the button and just wait. And then you'll hear it come on and it'll gradually get, just get heavier and faster and so forth, and then the heat will start coming out. So once you've actually turned it on, guys, you have to run it on full for 10 minutes. Also, guys, when you do to start it the first time, you may get a smell or an odor that comes through because it's basically, it's just igniting itself, it's running itself in. All right, so you might have a little odor. Don't be too just concerned about it. Just open the window, you'll be, everything will be fine. Also, just a couple of safety tips, guys. You gotta make sure that one, this vent is not covered down here, but also your exhaust and your inlet valve underneath the trailer. Just make sure that they're not blocked at any time. If you are halfway through and you find out that you run out of diesel, you have to make sure you turn the whole system off while refueling, okay? So system off, shut down before you start adding more diesel to the tank. In the van on the driver's side, in here is your trim a whole water system. When you wanna light your hot water system, just go into your cupboard, make sure your water pump is turned on and your hot water system is turned on. All right, just close the cabinet back up again. All right, and then you just hit the button. So in this process, guys, if 
the red light comes on, that means the gas hasn't purged all the way to the system. So therefore, all you gotta do, turn it back off, wait a minute or so, and then retry. And you just gotta may have to go through that process once, twice, three times. As long as the gas can get through the line, it'll light. Don't forget, for when it does light, it does take 15 minutes to heat up. Because it is only a little boiler, Right, so it's only a little flame under there, so it does take a little bit of time to heat up that 14 litres. The Truma hot water system cover. You have to take this off when you light your hot water system. Simple, turn that, it releases that, falls out the way. It shows you what to do here. You push your thumbs in, it splits the top, and it just pops off. Ventilation. As well with your Truma hot water system, guys, you must come and check it. It does take 15 minutes to heat up, so after about two minutes, come and check. Back of your hand, feel the heat coming out. If it's warm coming out, then you know it's lit. With your aircon, it can only be run on 240 or at least a two and a half to three kVA Jenny. It will not run off your battery system, all right? You do get a remote with it, so it's for easy access and so forth, turn it on and off. It is only a cooling system, all right? It's not a full reverse cycle. It is only a cooling system air conditioner. Also, in every one of our pop top vans, guys, what you gotta do, and it's a safety check, all right? When you pop it down, one, dark while you're doing it, so you don't hit your head, but two, anything that above this level, because that's where the van comes down to, take anything that's off here and here that protrudes up, you gotta take it off, because one, you're gonna damage the electric item or whichever, all right? And also damage the roof. And also, on your shower, Make sure the shower head is down so you don't hit it with the top of the van as well. Also on each van, guys, I mean, in one of the drawers, there'll be a little booklet. All right, each booklet will contain whatever the van has got, be it hot water system, diesel, air cons, radios, blah, blah, blah. There's a little satchel here. It's got everything in there, so just have a read up of it. All right, and then if you need to, you go to your user's manual and your troubleshoot and so forth from there. On your caravans guys, your tyre pressures and your wheels and everything is all part about being maintenance. So therefore you've got to make sure you maintain everything. Each van has its own manual that you can download. So you can get the checklist off there and go through it. On the front of the van guys, you'll find a little plaque of information about your wheel nuts. Now it states that it's 140 newtons when you tighten your wheel nuts up. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, which you should get one, but we supply you one of these ones, basically, it goes on and tighten her up, all right? Basically, you do crisscross pattern and just make sure they're nice and firm and so forth. All right. Now, doing wheel nuts up. It's, all, it's, it's very imperative that if you're going on corrugations every day, you take a 10 minute interval each morning just to check your wheel nuts. Now, with your wheel nuts as well, when you're doing them, when you first go, tighten them up at 50 Ks, tighten them up at 150 Ks, and then 500, because these are an alloy wheel, so they got to bed in slightly. All right, so they, they, therefore you need to tighten them up all the time. Beautiful. Okay, so also wheel pressure, guys. Now, it's all the parent of where you're going and what you're doing as well. Okay, so what we try to do is have it at around sort of like 45 pound, same as the rear of your car because if you go on the beach, when you can't take these on the beach, you are gonna drop into 15 to 20, same as what your car is. Now, whilst driving along, if you find there's a little bit of sway, because of how you've weigh, um, put all the weight in your van, you may get a little bit of sway up, so you may have to take these up to about 50, 55. So just check it, every time that you load your van, you may have to alter your wheel pressure. So maintenance on this is a must, okay? Brakes, bearings, swing arms, hitch, battery systems, all right? You must have general maintenance on everything all the time. If you need to call us and book it in, we can do it for you. A reputable dealer can do it for you, or you can do it yourself. Uh, you can download the manuals of what, when schedules that you're supposed to get it all done, but it's all about common sense as well, how much you've used it. It's very important that you do all maintenance Right, maintenance on your batteries, maintenance on your, your bearings, maintenance on everything that goes along with this. And other than that, have a great time in your van 
and escape with confidence.